hey I wanted to do this video as a response to the wonderful 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 evangelist uh, who goes by the name of living my best life I truly enjoy her videos if you have not seen any of her videos please go check them out she has the heart of an evangelist she has wisdom and just practical practical knowledge I mean you know that good stuff that stuff you can just you know you can just take with you it's not hard to figure out it's nothing that you have to go and grab a dictionary to look up it's just that practical everyday wisdom most of it they're just reminders letting us know uh, what God has said in his word and what he would have us to do and oftentimes she asks questions to her viewers and her subscribers and I am a very grateful subscriber to her channel I love seeing her videos um, and uh, this question was posed by her uh, yesterday and the question is would people be better off if there were no churches my God, what a question. And uh, I must first say this. I am a pastor. The Lord has blessed me to pastor. It's my third year past pastoring. And I have been in ministry for 15 years. And so um, I'm coming from the perspective of someone who has experience as a church goer as a church member, as a church leader, and as a member of the global body of Christ. First, I want to make sure that I let everyone know and that I, you know, make sure this is clear that the church is not a building. The church is um, made up of the members of the body of Christ. We are the church, the ecclesia, the called out. She's made that very clear in her video, so there's no need for me to go back over that. But what she's talking about, for those of you all who may have not seen her video, the video that um, is inspiring this response, I just want to make that plain. Now, so her question is, would we be better off as Christians if there were no churches? If there were just no churches, just do away with the churches, just sell all the buildings and just meet wherever you meet, would we be better off? First of all, I want to say this, and I have really thought about this over the years because we have all been frustrated. Perhaps there is no, <laughs> perhaps there is no one in the church that gets frustrated by the church like church leaders. Oh my goodness, <laughs> because we have to lead people through all of the drama and through all of the upsets and fallings out that take place in the body of Christ. And not only that, nine times out of ten, we are the ones that are blamed for it. Oh my goodness, Ooh, if my pastor just wouldn't have been so dot 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 and if my leader would have been dot 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 and oh, all of y'all just a bunch of hypocrites and dot 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 I have heard well I can't say I've heard them all because every time I say I've heard them all I hear something new but nevertheless God lets us know that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some are you can find that in Hebrews um he also lets us know in Psalm 22 that we ought to praise God in the assembly so that we ought to assemble ourselves together. Now, does it matter that we do it in a big elaborate building or if we do it in a park setting? I would say to this, you have to do what God has called you to do. If God has called you to have an outreach ministry, then perhaps or to be drawn toward an outreach ministry, then perhaps you may not meet in a traditional sanctuary setting with cathedral ceilings and Hammond organs and pipe organs and instruments and stained glass windows and pews. When I first established Promise Center, which is the ministry in which I pastor, we met right in the living room of my home. 
And that was greatly frowned upon by a lot of people that thought that since I was a national preacher and evangelist, I had traveled across the country preaching here and there and a little about everywhere, that when I started the church that I would all of a sudden have this big following, but it was not so it's just it's just the nature of my call to have a smaller gathering of people that I can personally pour into one on one, and so my ministry my uh, um my ministry has seen crowds and masses, but the church in which I pastor is a very small intimate group of powerful believers, mostly leaders. In fact, all leaders who come together to be sharpened and then sent out to the highways and the hedges compelling men and women to come to Christ. That's the nature of my ministry though. So I cannot judge another ministry by saying that they are not fulfilling the Great Commission because they have a large sanctuary and because they have a large congregation. So I can't get mad at them and say, well, I'm just not going to go because I don't think that they're doing what God has called them to do. And if you want to start me, talk about church because that is something that is near dear to my heart. It's something that I have given my life for and and uh, something that I will continue to do until the Lord calls me home. But this is why we should um, attend a fellowship with the other believers in the body of Christ. The Bible lets us know that we are supposed to assemble. We're supposed to come together corporately to serve the Lord and to bless Him. Read Psalm 134 and verse 2. We're also supposed to come together to receive teaching from the Word of God. Sure, I can read my Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate the text for me so that they may understand what God is saying to me in, my, in, in the Word. But we must also realize that there is no private interpretation of Scripture. And many times we can be very, very, very well-meaning, but we could be misinterpreting the text. Praise God. And the Bible lets us know how can they hear with out a preacher praise God so understand that just because you may have had a falling out with a leader it doesn't negate the um the, 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 the validity of a leader being in your life just because not all preachers are real and not all, everybody is okay fine you know but at the same time you know what's funny to me all the answers we give and I've watched the responses all the answers that we give for why we should not go to church or why you don't feel like going to church are the same scenarios that can also take place on a job or on a restaurant but there are a few of us who have stopped working. Why? Because you realize you just need to work. If a man don't work, he don't eat. You know you got to make some kind of money. So why don't we have that same attitude when it comes to fellowshipping with the body of Christ? When we know that this is something that God wants us to do. And I think many times we're just not convinced. We're set in our own ways. Just say amen, say out, say something. We're set in our own ways. We think our way is best. We don't want to submit. Oh, God, that's a curse word to a lot of people these days. To godly authority that he's placed over our life. And there is a purpose for a Christian leadership in the body of Christ. The Bible also lets us know that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So we must make sure that we are in an atmosphere in which we can what? Hear the word of God. We've got to hear that so that our faith can be strengthened and our faith can be built up. Praise God. And um, I'm going to do a part two to this video because y'all got me started. Keep watching.